The 39th storm of the year was Hurricane Henriette, which formed on August the 3rd in the eastern Pacific and progressed towards the west in general, peaking as a Category 2 hurricane with winds of 105 miles per hour and a central air pressure bottoming out at 976 millibars. The storm stayed away from land and so did not cause any damage or fatalities. On the other side of the ocean in the South China Sea, Tropical Storm Manghut formed on August the 5th and progressed towards the northwest, moving into the Gulf of Tonkin, where it made landfall in Vietnam. It caused the three fatalities and damages of $18,800 and remained a weak storm, peaking with winds of 45 miles per hour. Not long later, our next storm formed in the Philippine Sea on August the 8th and became Tropical Storm Utor, eventually peaking as a super typhoon with winds of 150 miles per hour shortly before making landfall in the Philippines. The storm moved through the South China Sea after that, making a final landfall in China. It caused 25 fatalities and $2.3 billion in damages. The fifth named storm of the Atlantic formed on August the 15th near the Cape Verde Islands and progressed towards the west-northwest generally, becoming Tropical Storm Erin not long later. It was a weak storm by the most part, peaking with wind speeds of 45 miles per hour and not causing any damage or deaths. On August 16th, Tropical Storm Pewa formed not too far from the international dateline and crossed it, moving into the western Pacific, where it became a typhoon, peaking with winds of 75 miles per hour and an air pressure of 990 millibars. The storm gradually weakened from here on in as it moved towards the north-northwest and eventually dissipated on August 25th without causing any effects on land. Our next storm, Tropical Depression 13W, was a short-lived system, forming on August the 17th and dissipating less than 24 hours later as it crossed the Ryukyu Islands of Japan. The storm didn't cause any fatalities or damages on land, even though it did cross that, that region, though the storm peaked only with 30 mph winds. On the same day, a tropical depression formed towards the southwest on August the 17th and developed into Typhoon Trami eventually, as it passed just north of Taiwan and made landfall in China on the 21st. The storm caused 20 fatalities and $406 million in damages, peaking with winds of 85 miles per hour and an air pressure of 965 millibars. Tropical storm Unala was named just as it was crossing the international dateline and entered the western Pacific, not lasting long though, dissipating less than a day after it formed, peaking with winds of 40 miles per hour and an air pressure of 998 millibars. Needless to say, out at sea over there, the storm didn't cause any effects on land. Back in the eastern Pacific on August the 23rd, a tropical depression formed and headed towards the north, developing into tropical storm Evo and peaking with winds of 45 miles per hour, so still a generally weak storm. It didn't make any landfall, but it did cause one fatality and $300,000 in damages as it passed fairly close to the Bay of California Peninsula near, its end, near the end of its life. Back in the Atlantic, a short-lived storm, Tropical Storm Fernand, formed in the southern Gulf of Mexico and quickly developed to reach wind speeds of 60 miles per hour before making landfall in Veracruz. It caused 14 fatalities and over $10 million in damages as it made landfall as Tropical Storm, dissipating fairly quickly inland, as you'd expect for storms like that. Next up was Tropical Storm Congre, which formed on August 26 to the east of the Philippines and generally headed towards the north-northwest until passing Taiwan when it curved back towards the east and dissipated on August 31st near Japan. It peaked with winds of 65 miles per hour and caused six fatalities and $180 million in damages. Next up was Tropical Storm Juliet, which formed on August 28th to the west of the Mexican coastline and brushed by California Sur on August 29th, dissipating the next day. With wind speeds of 50 miles per hour, the storm caused a single fatality and damages of $300,000. Not long later, Tropical Storm Kiko formed out at sea in the eastern Pacific and intensified to become a hurricane, reaching a peak wind speed of 75 miles per hour and a minimal air pressure of 989 millibars. The storm remained far enough out to sea to not cause any significant effects on land, causing zero fatalities and no damages either. Back to the western Pacific and Tropical Storm Taraji formed on the first day of September, at least as a tropical depression, and moved towards the northeast, eventually making landfall on Kyushu just before turning extra tropical on September the 4th. Reaching a peak wind speed of 60 miles per hour, this storm caused three fatalities and no known damages. Back in the Atlantic and the Caribbean, a tropical depression formed on September the 4th and was operationally named Gabrielle, though it turned out it was not a tropical storm until its second formation, not too far from Bermuda. The storm passed fairly close to the island and then turned away, um, fluctuating in intensity for a while before dissipating finally on September the 13th. The storm caused no known damages or deaths. 
Now for another short-lived storm in the eastern Pacific forming on September the 5th, Tropical Storm Lorena peaking with wind speeds of 45 miles per hour as it passed fairly close to the southern tip of Baja California Peninsula. The storm reached a peak wind speed of 45 miles per hour as said and didn't cause any fatalities or damages on land. On September the 6th, a very short-lived tropical depression formed in the Atlantic and dissipated just hours later inland over Mexico, reaching a peak wind speed of 35 miles per hour and an air pressure of 1,009 millibars. The storm is not known to have caused any damages or fatalities. A day after this, another tropical depression formed to the southeast of the Cape Verde Islands and developed into Tropical Storm Humberto, peaking as a Category 1 hurricane with winds of 85 miles per hour and an air pressure of 980 millibars. Uh, after becoming a remnant low for a while, Humberto regenerated further out to sea and lasted as a short spell longer as a tropical storm before dissipating on the 19th. Not too long later, another tropical storm formed, this time in the southern Gulf of Mexico, Tropical Storm Ingrid, peaking as a Category 1 hurricane and being the only hurricane to make landfall near its peak intensity at hurricane status. It reached a peak wind speed of 85 miles per hour, caused 23 fatalities and $1.5 billion in damages in Mexico. Back into the western Pacific now and Tropical Storm Manji formed to the south of Iwo Jima on September the 12th and curved towards the north and then towards the northeast making landfall in Japan on September the 15th as a tropical storm. Reaching a peak wind speed of 70 miles per hour, this storm caused six fatalities, there were no known damages. On September the 13th, Tropical Storm Manuel formed and moved northwards towards the Mexican coastline, making landfall as a strong tropical storm before becoming a remnant low not too long later. The storm regenerated in the Gulf of California, striking at Mexico again as a Category 1 hurricane with winds of 75 miles per hour, causing 169 fatalities and becoming one of the costliest hurricanes in that region, causing $4.2 billion in damages. The world's first Category 5 storm of the year formed on September the 16th and developed into Typhoon Usagi, reaching a peak wind speed of 160 miles per hour as it headed towards the northwest and an air pressure of 910 millibars. Making landfall in China, the storm caused 50 fatalities and $3.8 billion in damages. Whilst this was going on, a short-lived tropical depression formed south of Hainan and made landfall in Vietnam as it moved towards the west, Tropical Depression 18W, reaching 35 mph sustained winds just shy of tropical storm status, causing 25 fatalities and $61 million in damages as it moved over land. On September the 21st, a tropical depression formed near the northernmost Mariana Islands and headed towards the northwest, passing Iwo Jima as Tropical Storm Pabuk and intensifying to become a Category 2 typhoon with wind speeds of 105 miles per hour sustained and an air pressure around 956 millibars. The storm curved towards the northeast and stayed far enough from Japan not to cause any effects on land. On September the 26th, Tropical Storm Rutip formed to the uh, west of the Philippines in the South China Sea and generally moved westwards, developing into a typhoon reaching a peak sustained wind of 105 miles per hour and an air pressure of around 956 millibars. It caused 65 fatalities and $523 million in damages. In the Atlantic, Tropical Storm Jerry formed near the end of September and generally moved towards the northeast except for the time where it made a small anti-clockwise loop. The storm weakened after this and eventually dissipated on October the 3rd as it was heading towards the Azores without causing any fatalities or damages. On the last day of September, a tropical depression formed to the east of the Japanese Ogasawara Islands and headed towards the uh, west-northwest firstly, and then moved towards the north, developing into tropical storm Sipat and dissipating on October the 2nd near the Japanese coastline. Reaching a peak wind speed of only 40 miles per hour, the storm did not cause any effects on land. Forming on the same day as Sipat was Fito, a tropical storm that formed east of the Philippines and headed generally towards the north, peaking as a Category 2 typhoon with winds of 105 miles per hour and headed towards the uh, northwest, passing close to the Ryukyu Islands as it headed towards China where it made its final landfall. The storm caused 15 fatalities and was an expensive storm causing nearly $7 billion in damages, 6.7.